Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here's your latest series of the day. We have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times the square root of n squared plus 1 minus n. So when I asked this series problem on my Calc 2 exam, I asked for them to test whether this series converges absolutely conditionally or if it diverges. But today we'll just do whether or not it converges or diverges. We won't test for absolute. You can try if you want, though. So I notice it's an alternating series, so I want to do alternating series test, apply AST. First, let's identify what B sub N is. B sub N is everything without the negative 1 to the N portion. So that's the square root of N squared plus 1 minus N. So remember, when we apply AST, we want to check two conditions. Namely, is BN decreasing? And is the limit... of bn as n approaches infinity equal to zero. Those are the two things we need to check. So first let's work on decreasing. Now it might be kind of difficult just to look here using b sub n and determine whether or not b sub n plus one by definition is less than b sub n. So what I'm gonna do is rewrite it as a function and look at the derivative. So consider f of x, which is the square root of x squared plus 1 minus x. Let me look at what the derivative would be, f prime of x. So derivative of square root of x squared plus 1, we have to do the chain rule. Little shortcut, you put 2, the original radical in the denominator, and then derivative of the inside in the numerator, minus derivative of x is 1. Now these 2's cancel out, and my derivative is just x over rad x squared plus 1 minus 1. Okay, x over rad x squared plus 1, that's always less than 1. How am I making such a bold claim here? Well, let's think about something. x squared plus 1 is strictly greater than x squared. And assuming everything's positive, which I know it is because these x's only go from 1 to infinity since they're representing values that n can take on, then the square root of x squared plus 1 is going to be greater than the square root of x squared, which is just x. So that means if I have x over square root of x squared plus 1, and this numerator is always smaller than the denominator, this entire fraction is always less than 1. This is smaller than 1. And then if I subtract 1, then for sure this is negative. So if the derivative f prime is negative, then that means f of x is decreasing, which tells me that my sequence bn is also decreasing. Okay, perfect. Now, the second thing I need to check is what is the limit as n approaches infinity of b sub n, which again is the square root of n squared plus 1 minus n. So if you're looking just the way it's written right now, as n approaches infinity, square root of n squared plus 1 approaches infinity, so does n. Uh-oh. Infinity minus infinity is an indeterminate form. There's seven of them, just like the seven deadly sins. That's how I remember. If you need a review of indeterminate forms, I'll link a video in the description. And you can only use L'Hopital's rule on two kinds of indeterminate forms, 0 over 0 and infinity over infinity. So now's not the time to do it. This is actually a limit that you learn at the beginning of your Calculus 1 career. Especially the radical should be a good clue. Let's multiply by the conjugate of this expression. So conjugate would be square root of n squared plus 1 plus n. I'm going to multiply by that in the top and bottom. Okay, so here we go. Onward and upward rad n squared plus 1 plus n. Same thing downstairs. That way you're just multiplying by n, by 1. Nothing illegal has occurred. And we're writing limb every step of the way, like little calculus angels. This is going to give me a difference of squares, so I don't have to actually sit there foil it out. It's going to be n squared plus 1 minus n squared, and then just leave the denominator as is. And then, yay, these n squareds cancel out. Looking good. This is the limit now. 
as n approaches infinity of 1 over square root n squared plus 1 plus n. Perfect. That has fixed all my issues. Why do I say that? Well, look. In the denominator, if n is approaching infinity, this first term is going to infinity. So is this second term. There's absolutely no ambiguity as to where the denominator is going because now there's a plus sign. So the denominator is approaching infinity. A constant over infinity, where does that go? That goes to zero, which satisfies the second condition for the alternating series test. So since both conditions are satisfied, then I can say that the sum n equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, times the square root of n squared plus 1 minus n does converge by the alternating series test. I'll just abbreviate, AST. Okay, comment down below how you would test whether or not the series converges absolutely. And I'll give you a hint. It's easier to work with this version of the terms as opposed to how it was originally written because then you can do something lovely like limit comparison test. Oh my goodness, I, spoiler alert, I gave away the test. But if you would like for me to also work with this series and show you guys later whether or not it converges absolutely or just conditionally, then comment down below. We can do that as well. All right, that concludes the series of the day. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you need help with anything else involving sequences and series, you have come to the right place. Let me tell you, I have a fabulous video on power series. Maybe that's how you hopped over here and tons of other videos. So just check them out. They're all linked in the description. And you can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Twitter, Math with Professor V. Thanks you guys so much for your support. I'll be back sooner than later. Bye.